Ta-da! Welcome to this episode of Blooms for You. Thank you so much for being here. Nothing against Cousin It, but I have Ancelia Africana, Joe crossed with Puff Adder in Bloom for the first time on my patio. Not just an Ancelia Africana the first time on my patio, but an Ancelia Africana Bloom. <laughs> I am so happy to see this orchid bloom. Now, of course, being the greedy orchid grower that I am, I cannot wait to see the other ones bloom, but magnificent, look at this. Oh, if you've never been to my channel before, Welcome. These episodes, I take the opportunity to say thank you to everybody individually of all the names that I could identify. And if it's your first time here, you may not know that I grew up in Africa, specifically in Kenya. So put an Africa word into any orchid or a species and I am all over it. Unfortunately, my space is very limited, so I have to be careful with who I choose to have in my collection. But when I see colors like this and blooms like these, I am immediately transported back to my Boma where I grew up. And also, as a nugget if you're new here, I consider the giraffe my spirit animal. And what do you see? I see giraffes everywhere. <laughs> oh, anyway, if you're returning once again to watch a video of mine, thank you also so, so much for your support here on my channel. I am in southern Spain. It seems to be a very isolated area of YouTube, but the fact you watch my videos, you're so appreciated. And as per usual, when it comes to these episodes, everybody that is not mentioned here individually and personally gets a cluster bloom dedication. And I think Ancelia Africana is just the right candidate for this episode. So all of you not mentioned here today, my first time bloomer, my first First time to have Ancelia Africana blooms on my patio. This spectacle, this gorgeousness, it blooms for you. And they just look magnificent. Anyway, we shall revisit her at the end of the video. But right now, let's go and have a look, see what else has opened up and is in bloom or has bloomed and whose names have come up. In the meantime, know that this orchid blooms for all of you to say thank you for being here, for your support, watching my videos. What a difference a day makes. This is the second time I'm filming this clip because when I filmed it yesterday, it was super windy and I was being all apologetic. I was not sure about the longevity of my first time bloomer, Lelia purpurata variety striata blooms. And that is why I thought, get them documented, get them dedicated, because what if they collapse sooner than they normally would simply because she is a first time bloomer. So on a still day, I want to dedicate these three blooms to Joan Bennetson, Piseth Music and Laura Parra. The three of you, thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I am extremely proud to present Elelia purpurata variety striata here on my patio, first time bloomer after having her in my collection for the past three years. She already came as a big orchid. She came as near blooming size and I thought, well, hey ho, how long is this going to take? And I never expected it to take another three years for her to actually bloom out. But my goodness, my goodness, was it worth the wait. I will probably only be able to enjoy these blooms for approximately two weeks. That's why the urgency and yesterday, despite the breeze, I thought I've got to get this done. These first time bloomers are unpredictable. Even the first day, she was beautiful in the morning and looked like she had collapsed at night. But the next morning she perked up again. Now her petals and sepals, they have a firmness to them. They have picked up beautifully. They're holding their shape beautifully as well. I have to say that there is something so majestic about Lelia purpurata blooms. They make sense to my eye. Their proportions, everything about them, the size of the sepals in comparison to the petals, how the triangle just works beautifully, the lip coming out. I'm a bit confused that I have three different displays of columns. One is partially covered, one is completely covered, and the third one is totally exposed. So we've got a variety here. I've never seen that before, but no complaints. The one thing I want to also point out, if it doesn't show up on camera, is that these petals and sepals, the whole bloom has a crystalline effect 
effect. Somebody went and sprinkled pixie dust. Probably not going to be able to show that. I really hope some of the photography picks it up. And also, yes, she is in the sun at this point in time. So on the camera, the colors are somewhat washed out, hoping to give you a better perspective of the blooms. With photography, I've taken over the past couple of days, including when it was late afternoon, so that we can get an appreciation of her colors. Not quite 100% sure that all the images that I can show you will be an exact replica of what I see when it comes to the lip. The hues are so much deeper going into a royal indigo color as opposed to the hot pink that I see on the photograph. So we'll have to use our imagination there. It's not as hot pink at the edge of the lip as it is going into the lip. There's a real deep royal indigo, which is just beautiful. As I mentioned, these blooms, their dimensions, their proportions, they just speak to me. And to get three blooms from a first-time bloomer and to hold on, they are now over a week old, maybe 10 days, not quite sure, but to get them to hold on, even though I don't have a fragrance. I was hoping for something along the lines of powdered lemon sherbet fragrance. There is no fragrance for this one. I will have to wait for the next blooming next year to determine whether this orchid is fragrant in my climate or whether she just doesn't come with a fragrance at all. Her beauty speaks for herself, fragrance or not, super super happy to have gotten myself another orchid to bloom from near blooming size, maturing up to blooming size. We can tick this one off the list. She's a blooming size Lelia purpurata variety striata now, and she blooms for Joan Bennetson, Piseth Music, and Laura Para. Thank you to the three of you. Lelia purpurata variety striata, she blooms for you to show my appreciation for your support here on my channel. Thank you all very, very much. One of my dendrobiums, Dendrobium sauraula, that also lives together on the community mount of my winter resting dendrobiums, is now starting her show. And what a show it is. It's going to be for many, many months. These blooms are incredible. And every year she impresses me with the longevity of the blooms, the beauty of them, and the interest that even the buds have as they form. First of all, though, I want to dedicate these first two clusters to Matilda and Amina Zamaikina. Both of you, I thank you so much for your support on my channel. Very, very much appreciated. Your comments are always very encouraging, very motivating, and please know that they mean so much to me. Matilda, Amina, Zamaikina, Dendrobium sorraula, the first two clusters, they bloom for you. This orchid every year just gets better and better, and this year, Thankfully, I don't have aphids to contend with. Usually when they are in bud stage and they look like little Arabian slippers, in my opinion, it's like you want to slip into them. It's fantastic. Something out of the Arabian nights. Usually by this time, I have to somehow try to control the little green aphids that like to distract from what the buds are doing, but not so much this year, which is amazing. Another thing about this orchid as well, especially the blooms here, is that she doesn't like water dripping on her. So if you see a little bit of a washout like here, you would think it was like a painting of a watercolor that went a little bit too far. These blooms are so delicate that they actually respond to water in that way that the colors start to bleed into each other, even though they're only about three days old. She is not fragrant, but she is so charming. And as I mentioned before, her blooms just last forever and she is going to be in bloom for quite some time because not only is she blooming on the old nodes from last year's canes and the previous year's canes, there's clusters upon clusters all along a cane right down here. It's going to be impressive and on top of that, there is a cluster in a cane that still has leaves on it right up here. I would say for the next three months, at least, if nothing goes wrong, we're going to have Dendrobium sorraula blooms on the patio. The color is pretty much true what I see on screen with one little bit of difference, though. The camera is picking up a lot of pink. If you think of a vintage indigo, if you go into like the old colored aged lavender, it's along those lines. It's a little bit deeper 
and not as pink. So right here, there would be a deep kind of a lavender color as opposed to what you're seeing on camera. But the buds, they are showing true in color, which I find remarkable. I'm glad at least something I don't have to talk around. And they also have that magical crystalline effect just gorgeous. I'm so thrilled by this orchid. She was the one I wanted to have and then I got myself a Ceratolabium that lives next to her right here with much longer canes and they were like mixed together because the seller thought they were one and the same. Turns out I've got the Ceraula thankfully she's not that easy to find and on top of that I got a Ceratolabium which I wasn't even going to purchase. But you know, sometimes when these mistakes happen, they happen for a reason. And this is one of the ones that I'm really glad that I've got the Ceratolabium as well. So once again, Matilda, Amina Zamayakina, thank you to the two of you very, very much via my Dendrobium Ceraula Blooms for your support on my channel. You are so very much appreciated. Hawaiian tropic anyone? <laughs> Beautiful sunny day today, no breeze and the clear distinct fragrance of coconut permeates the air. I cannot tell you how delicious the smell of this gorgeous Maxillaria tenifolia is. But first of all, I would like to say thank you to Live Music in Paris, Sarah Ma, Tanya, Fallhouse, Claudia Stage, Carlos Sol Sanchez Gallego. All of you for your support on my channel here. This is the best blooming of my Maxillaria variabilis that I've had since I've owned her in 2018. She came to me as a very small little thing and I have to say I had certain trust issues when I saw the orchid itself. I figured she was mislabeled because her structures did not resemble anything that I had researched online about this orchid. I have very, very small pseudobulbs. They're probably the size of a walnut. They are not the usual egg size oval shape and my rhizomes are also so much more compact. Turns out last year I was just about to turn this pot around and almost popped off a bud that I had not expected at all and then finally I I got to identify this orchid and she turns out to be a maxillaria variabilis and I have to say that it is a relief that she is this compact the fact that she is staying in her container not climbing out of it per se the fact her rhizome is nicely bunched up makes for a nice tight growth nothing is really spilling over just yet it gives me a bit of longevity in this pot and she looks a little bit tidier than the standard long rhizome maxillaria tenifolias normally would be considering that i've had her since 2018 and she's been growing really really well usually the length of the rhizome would make this orchid double the size that it actually is. Having gotten over my initial disappointment thinking that this orchid was mislabeled, I am really glad that I do have a compact variety. <laughs> And we have ourselves plenty and plenty of blooms. I can stand at least a meter away from her and she smells delicious. I would like to say Malibu kind of rum style of fragrance. Very, very coconut, definite coconut in there. But without the note of alcohol in your nose, it is a delicious fragrance. You can imagine that I am really glad that I do have a Maxillaria tenifolia and not another orchid that has been babied in my collection for so many years. Turns out it's a first time bloomer and then it's not what you ordered. I was a little bit concerned that last year I only had one bloom and I thought, well, on top of everything else, I don't have a vigorous blooming one. Now that she is mature, this is going to be the standard procedure every year. I'm well, well excited. There's one thing about the blooms though that I find also quite remarkable with all maxillarias is that the petals are really just kind of closed. They never flatten out, open up. They really protect the column. But when you get in deep, it's the spotting, the markings. There's something so exotic about these blooms. Not very big, but they sure pack a punch. Even my single bloom last year, she was pretty, pretty fragrant for a single bloom. No mass blooming required to be able to appreciate that coconut scent. Anyway, I would just want to make sure that live music in Paris, Sarah Ma, Tanya, Fallhouse, Claudia Stage, Carlos Sol Sanchez Gallego, that all of you know that I appreciate your support on my channel. 
very, very much. And my Maxillaria tenuifolia, she blooms and smells divine all at the same time, but she is doing that for you. I hope that USA Klein doesn't mind having Jumelia arborescence a little bit kinked on the spur and not quite to perfection, but this orchid is just too cute to pass by. Even if the spur got caught in the leaf and I couldn't release it, I tried. I was afraid to do more damage. On top of that, I thought, well, maybe it would release itself before giving this bloom away as a dedication to say thank you. Maybe it would release on its own, but here we are. I am going to film this and give this bloom to USA Klein to say thank you to you very, very much for your support on my channel. Jomelia arborescens blooms don't last very long, otherwise I would risk it and push it out a few more days. Last year I would be able to get three or four days out of a bloom that looks más o menos pristine somewhat pristine <laughs> so i didn't want to risk losing this bloom and just letting it bloom out and then go on to the next one i think jomelia arborescence is such a cute orchid not just but the bloom itself is something so unique and different so i have zoomed in on this clip let's zoom out not much of a difference but you can see how breezy my conditions are I did want to feature this orchid and the bloom for a little bit without getting blown away. The plant itself has grown exponentially. She arrived back in the day and she was all the way just down here, a tiny little thing. Turns out now she's also growing lots and lots of little plants around her base, which is going to be spectacular when they get to blooming size, probably in around three years. There's more to come from this Jomelia though. The first time I am seeing another spike coming out of the same apex as the one that's currently blooming, that is a first. And of course, now you can see other spikes peeking through the leaf joints as well. And it goes all the way up to the top here. And maybe I think one more in here, yeah. So the spikes do take quite a long time to actually bloom from the first time that we ever see them. But needless to say, oh, she is so cute. I do not have a fragrance for her at night. I have tried. Maybe the next bloom will give us a fragrance. Anyway, USA Klein, my Jomelia arborescence, also called Casper the Friendly Ghost, for obvious reasons. <laughs> anyway, Jomelia arborescence USA Klein blooms for you. Thank you very much for your support on my channel. Another one of my favorite little orchids is the Renanthra monachica. And I am extremely pleased that this one is still alive after the spring that we have had. And she pulled through like a trooper. And on top of that, for a high light loving orchid, I am so surprised to even have a spike and a spike with 10 blooms around about there. That was completely unexpected, but here we are. So, I am going to take this opportunity and dedicate this spike to Angelo Hyacinthus, Leslie Ann Harmon, Eternal Traveler, Tracy Strombotny, and Stanislav P. Renanthra Monachica, she blooms for you. First of all, yes, she's still alive. Big, big plus. Second of all, we have a spike. Unbelievable, because there was no light for the months of end of February all the way through to possibly mid-April, end April. My entire focus was on keeping this orchid alive. Then she goes and blooms for me. How can I not be over the moon happy about it? On top of that, she seems to be doing really well. I thought I had almost lost her because the crown the newest leaf is showing signs that there was some kind of an issue in the early stages of its development, but it is growing out. So whatever happened there, <laughs> we dodged a bullet there, I can tell you. And on top of that, early in the season, I saw a new root growing out of the stem and it was looking promising. So that is extending into the media. And that is not all. We have yet another root growing from the same area that is also looking to go nicely into the media. So 
Whew, really, really pleased that this orchid made it through because I would have loved to have replaced her if I lost her again. She is my 2.0. And the first one I lost was because of stem rot. And literally that stem rot, again, came out of like nowhere. Don't know what happened. Can't exactly say when I was risky with my sprayer. So this orchid might look robust. She might have a firm growth structure, but whoo, whatever happens around that stem has to be really carefully monitored just that little blemish of the new leaf coming out of the crown i was not even aware there was any water near her because of how careful i was during the months where times were precarious to say the least but here we are so pleased that we still have her replacing her would have been a must but it would have been many many months or years down the line because buying orchids at this point in time is not a priority of mine I said Angelo before, maybe it's Angelo, you let me know, sir. Angelo Hyacinthus, Leslie Ann Harmon, Eternal Traveler, Tracy Strombotny, and Stanislav P. Very pleased, very, very relieved, super happy that this spike is blooming, and I dedicate it to you to say thank you to all of you for supporting me on my channel using <laughs> this spike, taking advantage of the results of some anxious months, and paying that forward <laughs> to all of you. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Let's give her a go in the shade. I took some pictures back in the day when there was a fire in the neighborhood and the sky was orange. I thought maybe I could enhance the colors or do something with the fact that the filter of the sky was so orange. Very, very interesting, but even on a clear day, there's no need to enhance the colors. Even in the shade, she just pops and shines and just looks beautifully, like exotic the way you think an African orchid would look with a name like Ancelia Africana. My goodness, I am impressed. It's the first time I can actually observe an Ancelia Africana do what it does on my patio. But I'm sorry, I just, this is just incredible. All the markings. It's insane, insane beauty. Honestly. Ooh la la. Mine isn't even that big. So I don't know, do I have the pygmy variety? I was expecting the size to be double before I saw any blooms. Not complaining, the more compact she stays, the more space I have to accommodate her in the winter. Anyway, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed seeing some blooms. I sincerely hope that if your name came up and you watched the video, that you liked the blooms that are attached to your names. Know that I appreciate all of you so very, very much. One more time, my gorgeous Ancelia Africana, Joe crossed with Puff Adder. She blooms for all of you not named here today. Have yourselves a beautiful day, everybody. On one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. It would be so nice to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.